The Creative Community is brought to you in part by a generous grant provided by the Diana and Simon Rabb Foundation. I'm your host, David Starkey, and my guests this time are Nir Gavaretti and Paxi Plakas chain Welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Pleasure. Well, we're, you are the representatives of the symphony here for us today. Uh, this huge uh, organization, so many people, but two really important people. Nir, you are the music and artistic director of the symphony, and Paxi, you are the president of the board. Um, so we're, we're taping here in sort of middle, late May, the seasons come to an end, so we we're, we want to talk a little bit about the season that's just um, passed, but we would like to talk more about 2013, 2014, right? So um, let's talk about what, what what have been the highlights for you guys so far this this past year. Well, this was our anniversary season, 60 years of music making and this community, and uh, one of the thing, the missions, the visions that we have about this symphony is to be really an uh, important part of the community. And so we had this last season a lot of collaborations with other arts organizations like Choral Society, the Choir Voices, different choral groups. We had a collaboration with the State Street Ballet, meaning that we invite them to perform with us, one of the masterpieces, Stravinsky Firebird. And we had other collaboration, multimedia concert with a painter that is uh, drawing life to the music of mm. Glazunov season. So this is part of our DNA to, to provide also opportunity for people in the community to witness music uh, on other levels, to not just the audio. Arts, exactly. Yeah. And we had, of course, uh, continued the performing the big masterpieces of the repertoire. Mm. If it's a Brahms symphony that we did, Beethoven Fifth, um, um, important artists like Andrew Watts, one of the leading pianists for decades in the mm -hmm. United States, opened with us this season with Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto. So uh, all of those are part of our mission to bring music to this community. Yeah. Well, Nir, you were on the, the program uh, almost the, the moment after you stepped off the plane in Santa Barbara, you were, where, you were here, um, and it's, it's been a while now. Is, is this vision of the symphony, does it kind of live up to what you, you'd hoped for? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I'm uh, extremely honored and happy to uh, be part of this family because it continues to grow on all levels, on an organization level, and that means financially, etc., but also musically. And we can uh, now... Uh, take the challenge of pieces that maybe a few years ago uh, mm -hmm. it would probably not be the, the mm -hmm. right thing. But I think uh, we've done a, a huge uh, step forward in, on many levels, as I said. Part of it was the moving to a new theater. Also, we had massive auditions. So our orchestra is, I would say, at least half of, of the members are new if I compare it to the colleagues that with whom wow. I started. Wow. And that's very natural in, in, in uh, I mean, maybe not to that extent, but orchestra has a tradition by musician who plays together, and then some are retiring, moving on, quit, whatever, and new generation of musicians are coming, and, and so the new colleagues has a chance to play with the colleagues that mm -hmm. were there before, mm -hmm. and they carry the, the, what we call the tradition. You know, if you think about uh, the New York Philharmonic or something mm -hmm. like that, they played the New World Symphony that Dvořák wrote for them, basically, and uh, so colleagues were playing it. Then after Dvořák passed away, the colleagues would tell the new colleagues how to play it. And till today, we can probably say, that's how the composer wanted mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's pretty much what's going on here now. And, uh, but we had it in a much faster, because when I came, there were a lot of vacancies. So um, we have now uh, musicians who come really from the entire nation yeah, yeah. and they some of them commute from New York from uh, Connecticut from Texas right. from yeah and I know that was part of your original uh, goal was to, to make the orchestra a more national international yeah organization. we are part of a big uh, organization which is the American Symphony League uh, and uh, so everything we do is advertised nationally wide so in every audition we have 
be, it's, uh, it's open for everyone and uh, knowing the situation now, how difficult it's for a musician to find a job. A lot of graduates from Juilliard, from Indiana, from uh, Cleveland uh, Institute of Music, from Peabody, Curtis, just name it, and mm -hmm. of course from UCLA, USC, etc. They would like to take the audition. So we take the best we can. Yeah, that's great. Well, Paxi, here is alluding to this 60 years and this big season. Um, from your perspective as the board president, tell us a little bit about what happened. Well, it's been a lot of fun turning 60. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea it would be so thrilling. But um, I echo um, Maestro's comments about that the organization is so vibrant. Um, what you've seen in the orchestra that we've become, um, you know, the younger members and the up and coming uh, performers, we have seen that on an organizational level. Um, the board, for instance, we have um, a complete, I would say, change uh, over the last five years. And a third of our um, board members, we have 31 board members, and a third of those board members are 55 and younger. Mm. Now, for a performing arts organization, that is pretty unusual, nationally yeah. speaking, yeah. even. So you see a very young organization while we're 60 years old, and I think that's really um, encouraging, because classical music, by you know, mm -hmm. is still very supported by the next generation, mm -hmm. and so that's. Um, has been really excited to see and to work with. And well, let's, let's stay on that point for a moment. So if people are watching who are in their 30s and 40s, right. or early right. 50s. Come and see us. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, how, how, how can they get involved? Well, um, they should contact me. They should come to a performance. I'm okay. happy to, um, you know, uh, invite them as guests, as my guests, mm -hmm. and just enjoy a performance to begin with mm -hmm. and see how young our orchestra is how talented and also mm -hmm. the organization all our employees and also um, our um, board as i mentioned um, they can become involved in all sorts of levels mm -hmm. you know serve on a committee if they are p young professionals and they only have two hours a week to do mm -hmm. uh, community work um, up till a board uh, commitment mm -hmm. which is um, a little bit more of a, a commitment but there's all sorts of ways but to become involved and okay. we have such a needy a music education program as well so we're very entrenched in this community so I'm very pleased to say that although we're 60 years old it's a very young and yeah, vibrant 60, yeah, okay. organization. <laughs> 60 is the new that's right. 30. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that too. So and, and people can go to the website it's thesymphony.org a yes. great website a great address to yes. easy to remember. Um, near, I was asking you before the, uh, the camera started rolling what's been your biggest project of the year, and you said, well, it's just about to take place. Can yeah, you tell us more about that? The, the, our uh, season end uh, concert, we, we performed. We wanted to conclude this uh, season with something that's really very exciting and difficult to put together because it's uh, a lot of components that are coming to place at one time, and that's a Mahler Second Symphony. And when I'm saying complicated is um, maybe for the, if you hear it, you don't realize, but Mahler wrote for a small band that is playing backstage, which has to be synchronized with the orchestra that's going on. And then of course there's a huge or a chorus and we, we uh, invited the, all the important uh, institutes, vocal institutes in town. So we have different choruses, including the Choral Society the choir of, uh, of voices, they are members of the master choral, and two soloists as well. So just to organize this, uh, we had to extend the stage. This is a fairly big, one of the most, probably among them, I would say five biggest pieces ever written. Mm -hmm. And uh, just technically to get at, and musically, of course, it's beyond uh, everything that we could dream about because Mahler also touches some of the essential questions uh, in life, what life means, what comes after life. Mm -hmm. So it's really um, an, an, a life experience. Yeah. Well, I, I know that, that professional musicians are, are used to working on only a few rehearsals, but this must be a big challenge for everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. But you know, we, uh, it's a professional orchestra, and uh, what I mean professional means that we can't prepare it. Mm -hmm. So everybody does its role before and when we come together, it's then we touch interpretation things and really try to see things that you cannot rehearse alone. But uh, the, the main preparation is actually made before we come on stage and that's very normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing what this organization made in, in 60 years because to put such a Mahler uh, music in four sessions, what's the norm 
for the union orchestra is a really a big challenge. Mm -hmm. By the way, very different from European uh, way of work. As I do work in Europe, the, we have much more than that. And normal rehearsals are longer as well. So I would say the conditions are a bit easier. But here the musicians are so well prepared. Mm -hmm. So that's enough. Yes. Yeah. As the board president, are you worried about anything in particular? Well, of course, but I mean to um, you know to add to that. I have two musicians staying with me, and I hear them you know play the entire day. No, in that's my all house. they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so that is really true that they, book, they right. you know get to the rehearsal yeah. so prepared already. Yeah. That it's a matter of maybe putting it all the pieces together, right. the components. Right. Yeah. But they're all highly professional people, right. and I'm. I have been really proud of that because um, there's a lot going on in this town, obviously. Um, but we've been able to employ 200 people in our own region, and that's just thrilling to oh me my gosh, yeah. that we support our own region and also that we don't only provide a professional stage to acclaimed uh, musicians, but also young and upcoming. And that's really been a mission of ours that you know we support a young and upcoming uh, uh, soloist, but also composers and um, conductors. So that's a, a great element, um, yeah, in that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, as you finish the, the season up, there's a, a sort of summer hiatus before. Um, no we hiatus. Started, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say there's a, there's there's a sort of official law right. in the calendar, but what right. what's happening during that time? Well, actually, in June we are collaborating with the Granada Theater, My Fair Lady. So that's uh, okay. that's going on, and the symphony will be on uh, stage performing. Um, for that, and so over the summer we prepare for the upcoming season. Um, I think, yes, there's no performances per se. In October we start the season again, but there's a lot of preparation that goes, um, you know, into that before we um, kickstart in October. And it's mainly we look at the strategic plan, are we on track, we look at, you know, uh, our marketing and development um, and all. Yeah, and preparing for our mm -hmm. education suite. I mean, we have seven programs in the suite, wow. which is unparalleled um, to you know any organization in town. So we have uh, music uh, exposure from third graders all the way to uh, participatory programs, ending with a youth symphony for 60 to 70 um, high school students. Wow, that's great, yeah. So all that needs to um, you know take preparation. Effort, yes, yeah. uh -huh. yes. I mean, we go into almost 50 schools every season. We bring you know, almost 3,000 children into the Granada every season. And we are in all um, nine elementary schools in the Goleta Union School District, oh, yeah. where we offer free uh, music lessons. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's a lot of that's preparation. That's a lot of great stuff, yeah. yeah. Well, let, let's segue into, into October. Um, and I've got the help of this little brochure, but I know the two of My you sure know what's going on. <laughs> hey, let's, let's hear you talk us through the season to come. So when people are watching this, they can go out and buy their season tickets for 2013, right. 2014. I, I wanted just to comment on this. What do we do in summer? Well, of course, we do continue to perform the musicians. A lot of them do Hollywood Ball Orchestra, sure. some other jobs. And of course, I also work. But the summertime really brings us a little bit more of relaxed time to concentrate of what, how do we want to improve our artistic mm. product and how do we program. So talking about the program that we will hear next year, actually I've started uh, more than a year ago over the summertime to think of a draft of pieces that I would like to perform and then I have an artistic team uh, which includes people from the board, from the management and some other community mm -hmm. uh, leaders or music lovers. Mm -hmm. And so we work for a few months to identify what is really the best for this community. And I'm, I want to make sure that people know that this is really designated for mm -hmm. Santa Barbara, which is which will be a bit different if I, the orchestra would be in Munich or in um, right, right. whatever. So um, we, we open with the planets, Holst, one of the remarkable, most remarkable pieces, uh, symphonic pieces. And, uh, you know, in our vision, we would like to highlight things. Uh, this is a piece that's very often played, but next to that we play a piece that is very rarely played, is a concerto for percussion, which is also an instrument that not normally would get the attention, but it's such a great piece, and it's a, it was inspired by Richard Wagner, the German opera composer, uh, who has 200th anniversary uh, this year. So uh, inspiring, inspired by Wagner, that's what we'd like to do. And we add to that an overture by the composer. By the way, there is no symphony by Wagner that I could program. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at least something in his spirit. And we have uh, one concert dedicated to another opera 
composer who has also the 200 years anniversary, that's Giuseppe Verdi mm -hmm. from Italy. And uh, so we have an entire program which highlights some of the most known and famous tunes from his opera, from earlier opera, from the middle time. So that will be Nabucco and Traviata and Othello, etc. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's quite remarkable. Two composers were born exactly the same year, and both of them never wrote symphonies, but they were really operatic mm -hmm. people. Yeah. We do bring them to the symphony. We have a concert uh, dedicated to music of Mozart. We have a wonderful uh, guest conductor, really a specialist of that, uh, Mozart style, Matthias Bamert. And that occasion, we also would like to uh, feature uh, our woodwind section. So it will be one piece that's written only for woodwinds. And this is a result of the auditions that we did uh, over the last years. Now, finally, we have a complete uh, woodwind section and really a stellar musician. So it will be kind of also interesting for the community to see a piece that is actually a bit different. I mean, it's not that you don't have the strings. and mm -hmm. So that will be part of the concert. Exactly what is, in my opinion, the DNA of the symphony, to bring next to the very famous and known pieces some pieces that are less known. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do continue to collaborate with other organizations. We do continue to invite young soloists on the way up uh, to make a professional career next to people that are already uh, established. So if we talk about February, we have uh, one of the most thought after a pianist, Hélène Grimaud. Mm. She's orig originally French, but uh, lives in the US. And, and she performs on uh, the weekend in San Francisco and then take the drive down to Santa Barbara, stay with us for a week. <laughs> and I think it's really a thrill for the community that somebody like Hélène would stay in town for a week. And I want also to mention that what Taxi said before, you have to know that for the musicians, one of the biggest, uh, uh, one of the most enjoying part of the week in Santa Barbara is staying, staying here. With somebody. Staying here. There's some of them commute from Chicago, from you know, right. other places, and they love to be, and they are so welcomed and embraced by the by the, this community. So it's become really a family, mm -hmm. and that's certainly what we are. And that have. does send those those threads out to the rest of the, the community. I think. Right. right. Well, you know, I, I'm interested in, when Nir is thinking about the, the program for the season and you're right. like, well, how am I going to help the maestro out? You know, obviously there are a number of people. I'd, I'd love to hear how that process works. How you mean community just, just, yeah, the, how people? the community, the, the people sure. who, who get together to finally decide on these are the, the pieces we're going to play. They may bring their own kind of interests and mm -hmm. pieces and um, you'll be surprised. I know the maestro knows, you know, probably everything in the descent. Right. But you know, there's an, a, a constant dialogue since when you bring community members, they live here, they breathe here. So sometimes they have a relationship into a composer who lives here mm. or a piece that is, you know, um, composed here yeah, or American yeah, or they've yeah. heard long mm -hmm. time ago. There's just so much that, I mean, actually, it's, it's really interesting. I was out for dinner and a few seasons ago, the maestro co um, uh, programmed something and I sat next to a lady from UCSB, she's a professor, and she said, well, you did this, and the composer is my, you know, great uncle. Oh, wow. And I was like, truly, <laughs> you know, I mean, you never, yeah, it's, yeah. it's very interesting how these things sometimes yeah. come together. Yeah. Well, you, you said um, people will sometimes ask for something from their heart, and that must be a difficult request to refuse, you know, when someone comes in and says, this is the most important piece of music ever written to me, um, and you're like, well, I'm not sure <laughs> we well, can play it. Yes, if, if I completely don't like it, and then I probably won't perform it, you don't want to uh, force an artist to do something you don't <laughs> like to do. But uh, um, to that point, there was once a request from a community uh, person here and uh, he said you know this is the anniversary or 25th anniversary or something like that with my wife and you know the first time we dated we heard this particular piece <laughs> and if you cool. wouldn't mind to program it and it is so beautiful right. you know it's a, Mo it was a Mozart a clarinet concerto right. I, I would yeah. love to do it anytime so if this <laughs> that's was an the, easy one. yes that's an easy one <laughs> and uh, you know I tried to make a, a it's sort of a mix between, between what the musicians want. They also have a say, by the way. Right. The musician would okay. say, well, we would love to play this. Like in the top of the list would certainly be a Mahler and, you know, Shostakovich fifth and, and these pieces. And I have my own list, which could be very similar to what they have. 
And then people from the community, you know, were like, we really like this piece. And so one concert I really dedicate to pieces that are lighter, in terms like William Tell, Overture, pieces that people know and feel comfortable to go and uh, without being very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. So we have all kinds of that. And of course, American music. I mean, this is an American orchestra. While I was growing up musically in Europe, I feel now very much part of the American scene. So we not only perform the masterpieces, but also commission new pieces. Like This is one of the highlights of the last season that we commissioned a piece specifically for us mm. and by a Baltimore-based uh, fabulous composer, Jonathan Leshnoff. And uh, we word premiered it, and I hope we have a chance also to record it because I think this, this piece will make its way into the rep of other orchestra. Yeah. That's what I enjoy the most. I mean, I, I learn, we learn constantly because Maestro brings in pieces we've never heard and he exposes us and it's there's always something new and exciting, mm -hmm. you know, paired next to something you would love to hear or, you know, you have fond memories of. Right. And it's been just such a thrill to hear, you know, new pieces and gosh, compo living composers. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And yeah, that's well, you exciting. know, we we've been we've been talking, we just got like about six or seven minutes left. We haven't looked at any of the images oh. that you brought in. <laughs> Let, let's take a, a quick peek at um, at the the the, the symphony sure. uh, in, in action. to hear and listen to, to um, what's going on. We do have some stills we want to go through really quickly, too. So um, talk us through this. So this is the uh, opening reception of our 60th, okay. so the beginning of the season. And uh, that was with Andre Watts. Symphony in action. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful shot. And who are these photographs by? Um, this is by Priscilla. OK. And this is our um, event in the Tobes Garden Symphony in the Garden, and this was closing our season. Okay. So closing the 60th season, we had an ensemble performing in the Garden for our donors. Oh, that's and, great. Yeah. And these are some members of our board, and honorary member and past president. Yeah. It's not our full board, and obviously Maestro Cabaretti. But a very august-looking group there. <laughs> 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 very generous folks, obviously. And so we're back. We just have, you know, about a couple minutes. Uh, Maestro, um, what have you got planned for, uh, for the upcoming months before you get back here? Well, after I finished the season here, I head to Switzerland. And I have an opera production which goes for six weeks by Geneva. It's Nabucco by Verdi. It's Verdi year, so mm -hmm. it's all world. I then have a short break. 
Not that short, but yeah, a few Going weeks back off. To Florence. Yeah, 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 I'll be home, and um, and then I, the season starts in Spain, mm. in Sevilla, which I'm very happy to. That's my debut with the Royal Symphony there. Mm, okay. So yeah, it's exciting Spanish program, and well, highlights of the next um, come upcoming things. I have a concertant version of Fidelio in Rochester, New York. Mm. A debut in Florida with the newest, uh, no, with the Southwest Symphony. Mm -hmm. And there are some other things going in Europe, in, yeah. in Italy, in Florence, in Rome. Yeah. Paxi, I, I always envy his life. But <laughs> yeah, there's actually some um, people who won an auction item and they're traveling to Italy oh, to see wow. my show conduct wow. in, uh, toward Florence. the end of the year, in right? Florence. Yes. Oh, Christmas. So yeah. see people here from the community yeah, yeah. can travel yeah. to Europe yeah. to see him. Well, what else would you say people are, are, are watching um, kind of final words as the board president? This is um, your last year is yes. coming up. Yeah, so. My upcoming uh, year is our, my last year and yeah. we're building on succession. Our executive team consists of 50% of, you know, um, really the young, the next generation who will carry forward the torch and that anyone who would like to um, become involved and again if there's any people who would like to join us for a concert uh, and be my guest mm -hmm. go to please. the symphony.org yes. and look for you and go find me yeah, yeah and find you on <laughs> there absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. it's a small town it is they may even <laughs> they talk to me at Trader Joe's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and any final words from you Vice Chair? really it's, it's uh, such a wonderful organization and I, I, I want to make sure people know that even in a relative small city what a strong uh, artistic musical profile mm -hmm. this organization has so um, I, I, I encourage you to come and listen to a concert it's really also a social event you find uh, you you see a lot of people you know <laughs> see a lot of people you know wonderful brilliant people yeah. well near Cabaretti and Taxi Exchange it's been a pleasure to have thank both you. of you uh, thank here. you um, we'll look forward to next season and um, you know break a leg yeah. <laughs> thank you. tomorrow night thank, thank you so much thanks thank the Creative Community is produced with a generous grant from the Diana and Simon Rob Foundation. I'm David Starkey, and thanks for watching.